Hi, welcome to Mana and Mercy. I'm Story Matkin Ron. I'm Annie. And we are here today to create a tiny bit of wilderness school. Last week, we learned about the wilderness school. After leaving slavery in Egypt, God's people, the Israelites, lived for a time in the wilderness. And when you imagine a wilderness, what picture comes into your mind? Um, wild things? I wish there were wild hamsters. <laughs> when you imagine wilderness, what do you picture? If you would, turn to somebody next to you and tell them one thing you imagine when you imagine a wilderness. Got it? Yes. So, as we learned last week, God's people learned important lessons from surviving in the wilderness. And one of those lessons, as they gathered manna each day, they learned that they could trust God for daily bread. When their manna rotted, they learned that hoarding, keeping more than they needed, was, wasn't necessary. And when people finally stopped worrying about being big deals, they could find joy in friendship, friendship with God, friendship with others, and friendship with nature. So today we're going to invite you to enjoy a little bit of that friendship with nature and God and one another by creating our own little tiny bit of wilderness school. What can we learn from nature about God's love? So we asked some of our friends to share their favorite thing about nature in the winter. What is your favorite thing about nature in the winter? Can you tell somebody next to you one thing you love about being outside in the winter time? Well, I like how you can see all of the different trees mm -hmm. and them and covered in snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, snow is beautiful. So when we asked our other friends what they loved about nature, we had a friend who sent us a ton of pictures. Have you ever seen anything like them before? What does it remind you of? This kind of living organism is called a lichen. Lichen rhyming with like go and hiken. And our friend who sent us these photographs shared that lichens are one of the most amazing living things on the planet. And lichens love winter time in Arkansas. In fact, they only grow in the winter when the temperatures dip below 50 degrees. The rest of the year, like in the summer, they are dormant. They go to sleep. They especially love wet periods like we've had recently in the winter because they soak up all the winter rain and become even more brightly colored once they're hydrated. So what else makes the lichen such a cool, weird organism? First, lichens are one of the most common organisms on Earth. They can be found in the ice of Antarctica, in the middle of a blazing desert, on a tree, in a forest, or on an outcropping of rock on top of a mountain. They've even found lichens growing inside solid rocks! <laughs> so how many kinds of lichen do they think there are in Arkansas? About 300 more or less. And they come in every imaginable shape and size and color. Second, lichens are a great example of partnership in nature. So when you see a lichen, it's actually three different organisms helping each other. And these three different partners, each one br brings a benefit to the other one. So there's usually some algae in lichen and it um, and creates a, food from the sun. And maybe some fungi too. Some fungi that are helping build the structure that the, al I, that the algae lives in. I do know some fungi. Yeah. His name is Fred. <laughs> so, Scientists call this kind of partnership where organisms thrive by helping each other. They call that partnership a symbiosis. And we think symbiosis is a pretty awesome example of partnership with God and partnership with God, with nature and with one another. Yes. So that's like the plant version of the story that we told. <laughs> it's the plant version of the story we told. That's right. So we're going to invite you to take a, a walk or it can be around your house. 
It can be in a park in your neighborhood. You can take as little as five minutes and see how many different lichens you can find around your house or at the park. If you have a magnifying glass, that's great. We didn't when we went for our walk and it was still a lot of fun. Um, as you're looking, just know that you'll probably see one of three different forms of lichen. So sometimes you'll find one that is, they call it crusty. So it'll look kind of like a paint on the surface of a rock um, or wood. What's the second kind they might see? Well, leafy, leafy lichens have little plaques like lettuce and are attached to wood. They're, and are attached to the wood or rock in one place. We found one that's leafy. And our friend said, if you're really, really lucky, you might find a shrubby looking lichen and they often look like a teeny tiny bush or a beard. These are some of the lichens that we found over here. Look over here, people. Look over here, camera crew, right here. Here is a lichen. Lichens! Right here, drink stick is pointing. Lichens, here. We also found a pumpkin. Here are some kind of leafy lichens. Maybe they were um, leaves that um, someone that that used to be on this once alive log. Well, here is some lichens. Same rock that we probably showed you minutes ago. We also found some lichen that looks like little branches around that li little speckled li lichen. It's more of that speckled lichen. This one has some nice yellow dots. We found some purple lichen. It was net, it was nudged into a little tree that I found by climbing on a rock. Oh, it doubles as a like a slingshot. <laughs> so we hope you find something wonderful and please send a picture to Marvin if you find a lichen that you really love. And so we wish you an awesome lichen adventure and we can't wait to see you. Happy um, Christmas. Yeah, and Merry Christmas. Happy almost Christmas. Bye-bye. Happy one.